Welcome to It's Not Your Fault. Thanks for joining us this week. I'm your host, Kim Power Stilson, with author, food expert, philanthropist Steve Shank. He's the author of the book, It's Not Your Fault, and you can find that on steveshank.me and It's Not Your Fault TV. Thank you for joining us on the Roku Box, on the internet, through Facebook. We're glad you're around. Please like us on Facebook and share the idea of an It's Not Your Fault with your neighbors, family, and friends. I know I have. I mean, Steve, we're going to talk today, I know, about the book, and one of my favorite parts of the book is the gratitude section. And the next couple shows, you'll get to tune in and learn how you can change your life. And just by way of intro, Steve, um, I when I first read your book, I think it was back in, in June or July, and as I took my family out and we adopted this plan, you're going to hear about this attitude, um, this gratitude. And my daughter, I'm going to just share this quick story. My daughter, as you know, is heading to college. And we weren't sure how we we're going to pay for it, how we we're going to get her in a dorm. And so we adopted um, the advice in Steve Shank's book, It's Not Your Fault, and applied what we learned from going to your seminars and watching this show on Roku Box. And before I even got to know you very well, my family was, was quoting you. And my daughter, within six weeks, had the car she wanted for college, she had the dorm room and all of her funding for everything, um, aside from what mom and dad obviously committed to pay, but it was fantastic. And so everything she wants now, she writes down in her, um, in her gratitude journal. And this is not like anything you ever heard. This is different. This is something that's yeah, different. It, it comes is. from your 30 years of experience and it works. So you want to listen to this. Well, some people, you know, it always bothers me when you say at the beginning of this thing that I'm a, a philanthropist. Yes. It sounds, it, it, it always gives you a little start because it sounds very close to philanderer. <laughs> and I just, <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I trouble over that. But yeah, this this is quite different. One of the things that I, I struggled with when I was in, in sales, just, you know, in direct sales, making a living just on pure commission. Pure was, commission's hard. And, well, yeah, how how things worked and and the starvation uh, thing. I, I I'd get these books on goal setting, and they always missed something. They always, you know, it said you know write down all your goals and and say them two times a day and uh, all that kind of stuff. But you 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 write down the goal and you say, boy, I'm going to have a thousand dollar a week income. And then immediately your mind says, yeah, but you don't have a $1,000 week income. You're never going to get a $1,000 week income. You don't know how to make a $1,000 week income. And, and you uncreated everything that you created by That's what my mind does. Doing yeah, your goal. Or used to do. Yeah. But you see, there, there's a key that, that nobody has ever figured out, kind of, it, it seems. Uh, maybe they never had to do it. Maybe they just wrote the book. You can't ivy tower this stuff. That's true. You, you wonder that. You sometimes. can't sit in an office and say, it's like most of the sales organizations that I had worked with over time, their sales manager comes down and gives you a sales manual that's got the presentation in it, and you know that guy has never been out in the field. <laughs> but he tells you how to, how to do the job, and it's just really interesting. So I've been in the field, I've starved, I've figured out how the goal things work because I've actually done it, and anybody that we've shown this to has had it work. It and where, where you start is with the decision as to what you want. In other words, when you're going to write a goal, you decide, and then you never undecide. You never undecide. You never question it. You never say, well, do I deserve this? Will my wife let, let me have it? Well, you know, uh, am I going to be able to afford it? Any of the questions about it, any of the doubts, you eliminate. And the way you, you, way you eliminate them is an interesting concept. It's called gratitude. Now, in the book, we've got good grief. That thing is twenty-seven <laughs> chapters, and uh, it, I mean, it's you know, it's got plop value, as, as they <laughs> it's say. A, it's a textbook, yeah. but but one you want to read. You, you, but you gotta you gotta say this stuff. But all of the principles that you go through that uh, are each each great ahas in and of themselves that yes. I don't think anybody's ever heard of put quite this way before. But when you get down to it, the chapter on gratitude summarizes everything and allows people to live every true principle, every true law of the universe, eternal uh, universal laws. It just works. And here's, here's a thought for you. Try and think 
anger and gratitude at the same time. Okay? You guys try and think uh, arrogance and gratitude at the same time. Just, just think arrogance and gratitude. Selfishness and gratitude at the same time. You can't think any negative feeling, emotion, thought, aggressive, nasty attitude. Think depression. That's the, the largest illness for American women, by the way. Depression. Isn't that interesting? Depression. Think depression and gratitude at the same time. Go ahead. Try it. See if you can. I don't care how depressed you are. If you force yourself to think of things you're grateful for, you can't be depressed at the same time. Two thoughts. Here's the thing about the, the human mind. Those of you who are psychology majors out there, uh, I are not. I'm, well, I'm a, I major in applied psychology. It's called sales. <laughs> you know? Well, and you were a guinea pig for your sister. Uh, yeah, well, don't even talk about that. That's, okay. that's embarrassing. But uh, anyway, the fact is, is that any of you understand that you can only hold one thought at a time in your mind. Now you can think several thoughts real quick and that's how multitaskers do it. They think this thought and then they think this thought and then they think back to this thought. But the fact is you can only hold one thought in your mind at the same time and that's why you can't hold gratitude in any of the negative feelings about yourself that you have. Okay? You, say, you look in the mirror and you say, I'm ugly. Well, think about, I have two hands. Some people don't have two hands, and they're good hands. Now, I have to throw this in because I'm sure people have questions at this point. So the first thing you do is decide. You decide, right? Mm -hmm. You decide what it is you are or want or to be. And then when those thoughts creep in, I mean, and I just did this at home. Um, I, I, had, I made a decision, and the first thing that I went to immediately, even after promising not to, was, oh, I can't, that won't work, it's just not possible, right? Mm -hmm. And you suggested to, because I've decided you can't go there, I think of gratitude. So I, I got a visual in my mind of something that always makes me smile, something I'm grateful for, right? Okay. That's a good way to so do it. So that's how I started. So yep. before you even start to think about your toes, that's, that's what it's. So every time I would start to think, no, 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 just to get you started, to get you beyond, I thought of that, that visual, and it really helped. That's why we have something called My Book of Life. Which is coming in the next series, the next yeah. show. And uh, it's, it's just an interesting little concept. And uh, we'll discuss it in more detail. But one of the first things that you do, you're going to have three sections in my book of life. And this is in addition to the It's Not Your Fault it's essential. You know, Guardian it. textbook. But anyway, so when you get, get into the gratitude section in the book, when you read the gratitude chapter, it tells you that one of the things that you need to do is start to make a list. Now when you get into My Book of Life, that's a little journal that you'll carry with you all the time. Uh, you'll be told to make a list of everything that you're grateful for. It has 10 categories. Some of the people that in, in your life that you're grateful for. You know, Make a, a list of the people that are no longer in your life that have passed on. You know, One of my great gratitudes is for, for Sherry my wife that I lost three years ago, okay? Uh, a great gratitude. I'm grateful for that little dog that sits on my lap because of the things that she teaches me. And, and you go down through grateful the things you have, things that you, that you can do, your skills, abilities, how you look, how you feel, your body, you, you know, all the stuff that you're grateful for. And you see, those are gonna be key areas that when you're, when you're dealing with the stuff in life that you want to accomplish, uh, the fears that you've got, okay? When you're, when you're eventually going to be dealing with a fear, a concern, like a lot of people right now are afraid that they're losing their jobs or that their job will be, you know, their company will downsize and they'll eliminate them, okay? If you deal with all the things you're grateful for, as soon as you get a fear, Remember, the law is every single fear that we have, every single fear is keyed or connected to a dependency that we have that we need to become independent with regard to. 
So you put that together. You've got all this thinking. And so gratitude enables you to take stock of everything that you've got going for you. And whenever you get a fear, immediately, some of those gals out there, they're depressed. Your home, you're, you're trying to keep a home. Your husband is, is working part-time because he lost his full-time job. You're struggling with trying to keep the finances together. You've got three little kids, uh, two of them virtually in arms, and you're just overpowered. And the first thing to do is become depressed. A lot of people are so sick that they're depressed. Um, all you do is you go to your gratitude list and find the areas that are most useful. And then you reiterate to yourself what you're grateful for. And sometimes it takes, it does take more than one visual. Oh, I yeah. mean, I had uh, recently, we had three deaths in our family. Oh, yeah, you just get really got hammered. And it yeah. happened all over one weekend. And, you know, it's very difficult when you <laughs> think of death, you know, when you lose someone, as you well know, um, to go to gratitude, you know. So then you focus. I was reading out, I was listing each of my toes and, you know, hairs on my head because I had to keep going until I stopped feeling so down um, because it just felt like life had squashed me and I'm I, for me you know that was a very hard time for me at the same time on the news all over the world things were terrible things were happening to people yeah. how collectively do you rise up from that you really have to dig deep without that direction of a list of everything in every a category of my life I don't know if I could have pulled myself up. I see why people go for those options because it is so difficult once you're down to come back up. But listing off the gratitudes in my life, that list was amazing and it really helped. Now we, we need to go to a break, but when we get back, I'd love to talk uh, more about that. And if you know you have questions, you are welcome to email us. You can go to asktheguardian at gmail.com. And you can also go to steveshank.me and submit questions. So we'll be back after this brief break. This is Steve Shank. It's not your fault. We'll be right back. Have you ever realized that freedom is spelled F-O-O-D? Food. After air and water, food is our greatest dependency. Taking control of that dependency ensures personal power, independence, and freedom. We can't control earthquakes, storms, martial law, dollar crash inflation, the global warming hoax, farm and garden restrictive legislation, job loss, crop failures, or the 2012 planet disruptions. However, if we have our own food, none of these can control us. Hunger can never be used to control you if you never are forced to stand in a bread line because you do not have your own bread. It seems the only freedom we still have control of is possession of food. If we don't control our own food, events are rapidly moving to use food to control us. Freedom truly is spelled F-O-O-D. Contact eFoodsDirect.com or call 800-409-5633. That's eFoodsDirect.com or 800-409-5633. Welcome back to It's Not Your Fault. Kim Power stills in here with Steve Shank, author of It's Not Your Fault. We've been doing Irish uh, um, Irish pub tunes today. Yeah, something like that. And uh, so Irish pub tunes. <laughs> the Lady in Red. Was a cold winter's eve. Never mind. I, you know, we could do an entire show on Irish pub songs. I've been that would make me grateful. So before the break, I've we never were talking. Been in an Irish pub. Go ahead. I'm you, sorry. Okay, we've got to do that. 
I will take you. Irish pub it is. Okay. That will make you grateful. Um, I'm Irish, of course, and so that's important to me. Get back on subject. I'm back on subject is gratitude. We were talking about gratitude. So the first step in this gratitude series um, is to write down everything you're grateful for. And hands, fingers, toes, whatever it is. And that you're going to write down um, so that you have access to. And when you need it, when you are, are going to doubt indecision, you go right to gratitude. And you could use what you've written down as a reference, which I've done. It's, it's marvelous. So now, Steve, you're going to tell us about, you said getting rid of dependencies. Once we're grateful, how do we go forward? How do we get the lives we want? Well, you take the, the things that you're afraid of, the things that you want to accomplish, the things that uh, you hope for, dream about, what you want to have, what you want to be. The be is very important. Uh, what I want to be, how I want to see myself, what what qualities that I want to develop in my nature and in, in, in how I deal with other people. Uh, those are all, most people refer to them as goals. And they are, I, I, I hate to use the term goal for the simple reason that it has, been, it has been so prostituted with regard to everybody that has a self-help book says, write a list of your goals and go through it. And they miss, Never it, it, it's frustrating. It's frustrating, and I struggled with that forever, because you 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 say you know if you're depressed or if you're if you're afraid of something, you're concerned about your house payment, whatever it is, uh, illnesses illnesses are terribly depressing because you have evidence right there that you're tagum not healthy. You can't walk for crying out loud. I walk very well, you know, uh, is your goal. And your body is saying, you're a stinking liar. How do you deal with that? Makes you more okay. depressed. <laughs> yeah. And so um, what, what, I, what I tell folks to do, and, and we'll give you the mechanism here uh, as we go through the, this series, but what you need to do is look at all of the things you want, need, fear, you know, need to accomplish, and would like to have and be, and make a list of everything. Okay. Everything, for example. Everything. Um, you want a motorcycle? Fine. You want a job? Fine. If you want a promotion? Fine. You need to have a house. A lot of people are homeless. Need a house. So do I write, need, need a sleep. house, or do I write? I have a comfortable home for my husband and me. And whatever it is. I can kids, afford it. <laughs> you know. And... I have the means to afford the home that is perfect for us at this point in time. Now, uh, if you want a Corvette, that's fine. Some people are saying, I have enough to eat. I have three meals a day of good, nutritious food. That's hopeful. That's what they're grateful for in the future. That's what they, And then eventually when they're talking about it and thinking about it, I have three good nutritious meals a day, you know, of, of, of good nutritious food. And then when the little bird says, yeah, but you're standing here hoping somebody's going to give you a quarter with that stinking sign in your hand, then you say, I'm grateful that I have two feet to stand on and two hands to hold the stinking sign and a piece of cardboard to write on with the lipstick that I borrowed from my wife, you know. But the point is you decided. You decided. You decide that you're going to have that. Mm -hmm. and, you're, and then, you know, at, at that point, prayer and your goal setting and your gratitude all become very confused. In a good way. Think about prayer. You know, a lot of people don't, and, and, and those of you that don't believe in prayer, that's fine. Uh, Think of something else, but basically you're going to be praying anyway, so you might as well give up and decide you're not a total atheist. The universe loves you, but that's okay. <laughs> and so what you do is you, you state what you're asking for, and you say, I am grateful for the fact that I have this beautiful, comfortable home, not elegant, sufficient for my needs, 
because I want to tap the universe for something after I get this basic home, I would need transportation. I need this. And if I blow all of my good stuff on a big fancy home and I got no play, no way to get there or no job to work with, so what's that? Be, be reasonable okay. in terms of getting inspiration for what you're grateful for. Um, it, it all comes about. So the best way to pray is not to say, God, please make me rich. God, please, you know, do do this or that. Say, Heavenly Father, if that's the way you address it, or just state your your gratitude to the universe. I'm grateful for the fact that I have a comfortable, warm home for my wife and my children, or my husband and my children, or my husband and me, or my companion and me, or me, whatever whatever it is. State it as though it is here, and you're grateful for it. And if you write all of this down, and then when you first get up in the morning, and just before, even after you've had your prayers, the last thing you do at night, when your subconscious is most open to suggestion, you state your gratitude for that goal, and you list them every single day, twice a day, and then you keep track. There's a third little journal, part of this little my the next you know, show, right? yeah. you know, my book of life journal the third area is where you record what you did you are accountable you are taking responsibility and you, you got to understand that the most important thing about becoming the magnificent beings that we are and accomplishing what you choose to have in your life you've made a choice everything in your life you've chosen even your illnesses now I know that you're gonna get really aggravated at me for saying that but honest you have the power and control if you choose to be grateful for already receiving that for which you pray that for which you you know that which you need very simply the universe will bring it to you even if some skunk stole two hundred dollars from you and you got you don't waste any time going out and figuring out how to get the skunk the stinker the bad guy the nasty what you say if that can't be resolved I'm gonna see that money and the universe will not allow me to be cheated if I don't get negative and be angry if I say I'm grateful for the fact that I now have two thousand dollars in return with good to all concerned thank you thank you thank you I'm grateful for not having ever lost or been cheated on anything because that's my life that I choose to have a charmed inspired happy successful prosperous healthy life and it's all up to me if it is to be it's up to me and the beautiful thing is that's the way God created you that's the way you have come into this universe as a perfect human being perfectly capable of accomplishing anything that you need to accomplish and that's what the books all about and the best way to get on the path is to be grateful for what you have be grateful for what you have determined, decided to accomplish and achieve and become. And that way, we can become the magnificent, capable human beings. And you see, it's not all my deal. All of this will become so true. The interesting thing about a truth is when you hear it, it will be almost like a remembrance of something you already knew, but you just got the aha that you knew it. So nobody's going to tell you anything new. Everybody's going to tell you what you know in your heart of hearts. As you hear these principles from the book, It's Not Your Fault, as you attend the seminars, as you start to write in your My Book of Life, you'll discover this is so true, so absolute, I know that I can do this and that my life is really a magnificent adventure and that's what it's all about.